Welcome to our tutorial on Wasp 3D Designer, a powerful software tool that offers an intuitive and user-friendly interface for designers. In this tutorial, we will explain how to create this four-pointer headline graphic with the ability to display several headlines from the same graphic. We will also cover how to extrude 2D shapes on a path using material from the library, using opacity map for creating a revealing animation, text presets, Form controls to add data entry. Image editor. Page controller. The page controller is a helper tool designed to facilitate the efficient display of diverse content across multiple pages. Paging technique allows users to showcase a variety of information reusing a collection of objects in the page controller. It presents and navigates through multiple pieces of content within a unified interface called page player. Users input data into the data paged control in the data entry form. The page controller processes the entered data, applying it to scene objects based on their variables and animates them. The page controller seamlessly animates through the data pages until all pages are displayed. Users can add any number of pages, and the page controller dynamically integrates and animates elements with new data from each added page. Use the polyline tool to create the design shape. Refine the shape by adjusting the vertices of the polyline. Furthermore, tweak the design by modifying the bezier handles. You can adjust a single handle with Alt and both handles without Alt. To elongate your shape through spline extrusion, start with a rectangle. Next, use the spline extrude tool. Select rectangle as the source shape. In the source spline, choose the polyline you created. You are not only limited to rectangles. You can use any 2D shape as the source shape, and it will impact the spline accordingly. Now, let's progress to our design. With all the necessary adjustments made, our base is now ready. Duplicate the object. For the center plate, use another rectangle. Selecting the rectangle as the source. And in the source spline, use the same polyline as before. You can alter the source shape even after creating it. Please make sure that the element in the scene has proper naming and group. Once you've fine-tuned the vertices, duplicated objects, and added additional elements, the basic layout is complete. Now, let's proceed to explore materials. Access the material library by pressing F5. The material library is a collection of materials stored as a reference or for repeated use within a user's local system. You'll discover a range of materials like floor, wood, and metals neatly organized in a folder hierarchy. Drag and drop the materials onto the respective objects to apply them. You can locate all the scene's materials here. Now that the material is applied, proceed to add reflections. To create the reflection, please check our tutorial name band. Here, the floor is already added to the favorite pool. Press F12 to access the favorite pool and drag and drop it into the scene. Render on all the necessary objects that need to be reflected scene. To add material to the background, apply it to the background layer. Now, we can proceed to animate this design. Let's hide unwanted objects. Turn on the auto key. Select the base and animate the spline start and values. Animate the top base as well by applying animation through translation and adjusting visibility. For the center plate, 
We'll use our unique feature, the Opacity Node Mask, to create a revealing effect. Select a 2D or 3D shape. And modify its position, height, and width. Drag and drop it onto the top element to inherit its animation. Afterwards, group the object you wish to mask, and within the opacity node, use the rectangle for masking. To create the out animation, select the top spline and simply copy and paste the first and last keys. Now that our design is complete, we can now shift our focus to the text part. Take a 3D text with your preferred font, colors, or material and set the position. Go to the preset library, apply a pre-made text animation, and adjust its timeline. For pointers, take another 3D text. Access Text Editor by pressing F11, adjust its parameters and position. Press M to enter Manipulate Mode, making it easy for users to adjust properties within the viewport. You can also set the bounding box here to control how the text wraps around a specific area. Duplicate the object by pressing Shift plus Copy. Define the number of copies and set a translation value. Cl click Proceed to confirm the changes. Group all pointers. And in the Opacity node, choose the source. We've created a design for the image holder. You can create your own cool design using our 2D and 3D tools. Apply an Opacity mask to this as well. Put all the elements in the main group. Let's move on to adding the page controller. Remember to consider the first and last frames of the animation for the page controller. Take page controller. Input first and last keyframe. Lastly, drag and drop all the objects into the page controller that need to be repeated with the new data. Add pause infinite key on the default timeline at the point where you want to hold the graphic. For the page controller, make sure to add a pause of the required duration. This will keep the data on the page for that duration. Now, press F8 to open the variable sheet, create variables using the string type, for the pointers and headers. Do the data entry. Filter all the texts used in the scene by selecting them in the filter. For wiring drag and drop all objects to their respective texts. Now, let's create the image editor. With this feature, you can easily adjust scale, offset, zoom in, and zoom out directly on the form. 
To do this, select the object, select the image texture, and enable all the properties to bring it onto the form. Once it's done, let's create the form for the template. Head over to the Form tab and drag the page controller onto the form. Dock it on the top. On the right side, you'll find options to customize the form's appearance. Once you've put the page controller on the form, just drag and drop all the variables onto the form as well. After that, you can resize it. Now, go to the player section and add a data page player. This will give you the controls to play the page controller. Dock it on the top. You can have multiple page controller in the scene. To choose the specific page controller, select its name in the controllers section. Additionally, in the page source, select page controller. Now let's move to the Sting client and play the template. Open Sting client and Sting server. Create a standard playlist and drag and drop the template in the playlist. Double click on the template to load the graphic. Press F9 to queue. Press F2 to do the data entries. You can add multiple pages here with the plus sign. Do the data entries in all pages. Browse the image. You can clear unwanted pages from here. New pages can also be inserted. Switch pages from these buttons. Autoflow repeats the entries of the selected slug. Enabling the loop option causes the entries to cycle from the last to the first. Play the graphic. This is how you can efficiently display diverse content across multiple pages.